Hey everybody, interesting day. Today we saw the first official reaction by the Trump administration uh, towards Saudi Arabia with regard to the situation involving the killing of that journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Um, Steve Mnuchin, U.S. Treasury Secretary, decided to pull out of a monetary conference that is being held in Saudi Arabia. Up until now, I, sh I should say up until yesterday, uh, Trump himself basically let the Saudi uh, leadership, which is really Mohammed uh, bin Salman, the Saudi prince, let him off the hook by saying it was some some rogue actors that were involved in the killing of this journalist when the evidence is uh, overwhelming that this guy was killed at the order of uh, bin Salman himself. Uh, so it seems to be a little bit of a tightening of a position by the Trump administration toward the uh, Saudi ruler. Uh, this is very important because Saudi Arabia, and by the way, uh, in Congress, there is a growing uh, outcry and some momentum building towards uh, the imposition of sanctions against Saudi Arabia being led by Republicans, none other than Lindsey Graham, who is uh, an ally of the president. So the president is under pressure now to maybe not formally accuse bin Salman, but to show some sort of, of um, dissatisfaction and not just completely let this guy off the hook by making obviously ridiculous statements that this was carried out by, oh, some rogue people that just happened to get in there and it was an interrogation that was botched. I mean, that is ludicrous. It's ridiculous. Everybody knows that is completely ridiculous. Now, the Saudis have threatened retaliation if there is any sort of sanctions applied on them. And there's a lot that they can do. For example, uh, they've been talking about um, oil and oil prices. All right. So the Saudis as basically monopolists in the, uh, the oil pricing globally can restrict output at a time when prices are already high. And they know this. And there's talk about them or they have mentioned uh, pushing prices way up if there is any sort of punitive action levied against them. So that's something to keep an eye on because this is, as I said, the first time today that we have seen some official response. It's still a tepid response, uh, however, but it is moving away from just a blanket, um, you know, uh, letting these guys off the hook as had been the case up until yesterday. That's number one. So oil prices are down today. They're down on the sell-off in the stock market and general pressure on commodities. By the way, gold is holding on to some slim gains. Let's talk about what's happening with the dollar. And by the way, all you people posting up, hey, how's your dollar, how's your dollar? My dollar position is fine. The dollar handle, in case you haven't looked, the dollar index handle is still 95. Still 95. We've been 95 handle since June. It goes up a little bit, it goes down a little bit. Still 95. I don't know what everybody's making such a big fuss about. The dollar handle is still 95. Talk to me when it's 98. Talk to me when it's 104, when basically I was selling up there. Talk to me then. It's 95. It's been 95, that dollar index handle, since June. So I don't know what everybody's carrying on about. Nothing's happened. However, I will say this, the focus is really shifting now and the focus is really shifting to uh, the Chinese Yuan. And that's because basically China has drawn a line in the sand at uh, the uh, dollar Yuan exchange rate of seven. And this is the problem with pegged currencies. Pegged currencies are susceptible to speculative attack. Currencies that float are not susceptible to speculative attack because they just float to some new equilibrium level and then everything gets adjusted. But uh, China has drawn a line in the sand at the uh, dollar yuan exchange rate of seven. We've been up to 695, marginally above 695, uh, I guess it was last week, came back down. We're back up to 695 again today. China has the ability to defend that level for a long time, 
It's got a lot of dollar reserves. Uh, whether or not it chooses to do that, I have no idea. I am not on the inside in terms of making policy over there. Uh, I will say this, I, I would imagine that China would be concerned about the reaction from Trump if it allows the dollar yuan exchange rate to rise above seven because Trump has uh, been increasingly sort of belligerent against China in terms of uh, calling it a currency manipulator. Uh, so I think China is sensitive to that and I think it will continue to defend that rate, uh, but I don't know. The point is I don't know. And this line in the sand is affecting the dollar. There's a spillover effect into the US dollar. You have this, this uh, flight to safety going on, okay? But again, dollar index 95, keep that in mind. With everything that is going on, everything that is going on, all right? With the China thing that's going on, with the interest rate, eight interest rate hikes and the Fed coming out daily, every single day now saying, we're still gonna raise interest rates. We're gonna keep on raising interest rates. In fact, we're gonna raise them even beyond the neutral level because you know we just gotta be sure that we raise them enough and the stock market is crashing and they're still saying we're gonna raise rates with everything going on. With all that going on, the dollar index is at the 95 handle. And even if it went to the 96 handle, we saw that already. We saw that back in August. Nothing happened. Nothing is happening of any major consequence here. So you have the dollar yuan exchange rate at the highest level that we've seen recently 695 where the Chinese government has drawn the line in the sand at seven and said it will not we will not allow this to go past seven you got the Trump administration and the Trump himself saying if you let this thing go past seven you're in big trouble we're gonna we're gonna load you up with tariffs like you have never seen before we got the Chinese stock market going down because of policy over there and all this stuff, and then we have the Fed every single day saying we're raising rates, we don't care what happens, we don't care what happens to the stock market, we're not only raising rates, we're raising rates beyond the level that we thought before because we just can't be sure, we better just raise them enough so that we're sure, and we're at a 95 handle on the dollar index. I don't know, like, do you guys just make this stuff up in your head like the dollar is soaring? I don't know, I mean, I look at facts. I look at reality. I look at numbers. So um, those are the things. Right now, the Saudi situation is very um, interesting because today we had the first official, by official I mean administration's reaction because Mnuchin does not pull out of that conference unless he has a green light or unless Trump is telling him to do that. Now that's a very, very mild response compared to the uproar that we are seeing everywhere, all over in Congress, in the media, and on both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat, that is a mild response, but nonetheless, it is the first response. Up until yesterday, Trump and Secretary of State Pompeo were saying, uh, it's cool, it was a bunch of rogue people, he didn't know anything, Ben Salman didn't know anything, which of course is total BS. Of course they know that he knows. Of course they know that he knows. Everybody knows that he was behind the murder of this journalist. Everybody knows that. Come on, you have to be an idiot. Not, and to, and to, to fall for that ridiculous excuse, oh, I had no idea. It must have been a bunch of people who just got in there. It must have been 15 people who just got in there uh, by accident and wanted to interrogate the guy and it was a botched interrogation. They got tapes, they cut the guy up while he was alive. They got audio tapes. So it's ridiculous. But until yesterday, there was no reaction. They were letting the guy completely off the hook. But now today, Mnuchin is pulling out. We'll see what happens. Today, Pompeo said he wants to give Ben Solomon a little more time, a little more time what to embellish the story a little bit. I mean, it's, it's really, really a travesty when you think about it. I mean, the whole world is looking at this knowing it's blatantly, obviously uh, a, a, a murder committed 
at the order of bin Salman. And, you know, they're saying, well, we have no idea what would happen there. Some rogue people just got in there and decided to interrogate the guy, and it was a botched interrogation. Oh, the body? We don't know where the body is. There's no body. Right, because they cut the guy up. So um, this is the first official response. So we have to keep an eye on this because Saudi Arabia has said if there are sanctions, these are the things we're going to do. Get closer to Russia. Get closer to Hezbollah and Hamas. Get closer to Iran. These are a number of reasons why the United States and Trump didn't want to accuse the guy and didn't want to go hard on the guy. But, for, you know, the first thing Trump said was there's going to be he a heavy price to pay big time sanctions if they were involved. And then they pull, he pulled back once bin Salman, once Saudi Arabia threatened retaliatory action. Once they threatened retaliatory action, he pulled back. So you see where his sensitivity is. He doesn't want oil prices to go up. He doesn't want Saudi Arabia to get, in, get back in close with Iran. All right? So all this stuff is playing out right now. It's creating a lot of... And by the way, the stock market, if you look at the stock market going down, and if you read the headlines, everybody's saying it's because of rate hikes. It's not because of rate hikes. It's because of this Chinese thing, this China thing. China is mismanaging their policy right now in reaction to, you know what, the tariffs, uh, the, this whole um, tectonic shift in the trade relationship between the United States and China, that's a good thing for China. That's a good thing for China. But China is mismanaging this largely because of monetarists at the Bank of China, the central bank, who operate under the same flawed economic understanding as all central banks everywhere. So you got to deal with the, the, the stupidity. I've said many times that central bankers are zombies just like the zombies here on this channel. But they have unlimited pocketbooks, so they can be a lot more dangerous. Got to keep an eye on that. Anyway, that's what's going on. Dollar index, 95 handle. Talk to me when it's 98, 104, 100. We'll talk then. All right? Have a nice day. Bye.